Hello there and welcome to another Hero Arts video. It's Michelle Short here and today I'm embossing with dies. So let's get started. This is the Hero Studio July 2024 Fancy Dies of the Month. There's an individual cloud, a kite and a hot air balloon and this wonderful background which is what I'm going to be using today. You can die cut it and use the positive or you can die cut it and use the negative or you can use both together. Today I'm actually embossing with it. So I've got a panel of deluxe smooth white cardstock that I'm temporarily adhering onto some scrap paper. That's just going to hold it in place while I do some ink blending on top. I'm going to create a galaxy background and I want to start off by adding some blobs of colour into the background. So that's a technical term blob but it's the easiest way to try and describe it. So I started off with a lemon yellow at the top using a large blending brush. I'm now going in with aquatic and I am making these blobs of colour a little bit bigger than I actually need them to be because when I go over with the black it is going to make them a little bit smaller. Now I can go in with ultra pink and I'm not too concerned if they're blended well or anything like that because I'm adding so many more layers onto this background. At this point it's not going to matter if they're blended or not. I can then add some paradise into the bottom right hand corner. Really love this aqua shade. And then I can finish off with some amethyst. I'm then going to bring in pitch black core ink and I'm going to start off by using an extra large blending brush. This is so that I get a really nice smooth blend between the colours and the black background. I find that I tend to get a slightly smoother blend with larger brushes versus slightly smaller brushes. So I'm starting off with the extra large brush and I'm just going to go around the outside edges and then also in between all of the colours. So basically covering up all of those white areas and then any areas of colour that kind of blended into each other like the pink and the purple there. I am going to go in with that black and just make sure that they're kind of all separated slightly. It does look a little bit grey at this point but that's absolutely fine. I'm now going to go in with a large blending brush just one size smaller and just try and saturate that black a little bit more. So I'm going over all of the areas that I've already been on and darkening them up but I'm trying not to go too far into those blobs of colour because I did get a fairly smooth blend between the black and the different colours with that larger brush. So it does look really quite messy at this point um, but like I say I am adding lots of different layers on top and hopefully at the end it doesn't look so messy. So I can just finish off blending that on and it does still look a little bit grey in areas but in the end I think it worked out okay. I do just want to add a little bit more saturation of those colours so I'm going to go back in with the same blending brushes and the same inks and just add a little bit more colour on top. Unfortunately with the yellow there was quite a lot of black ink on that brush and I didn't realise so I've ended up adding a lot of black into that colour which isn't particularly pretty. I didn't want to stop at this point and start again so I am going to continue but ideally that wouldn't have happened and I would have just kept it if I'd known <laughs> that nice uh, kind of brighter yellow so I've done that with all of the colours and now I'm going back in with that black again and just trying to darken some of those areas that look, looked a little bit more grey I don't mind having some lighter areas but I don't want it to all look grey I've now got the star cluster stencil and I'm going to go in with the same colours of ink and I'm just going to go over where the colours of ink are on that stencil kind of underneath. I can just about see underneath um, where the colours are and I thought it would look quite fun just to have some of these stars and sort of dots and things like that on the background. You're not going to notice them a huge amount once I've added the other bits on top but it's just nice to have them there and I don't mind too much if some of the colour kind of goes over the black. It gives kind of a funny look 
in terms of like you can't really see that it's a color on top of the black but it does just darken it a little bit um, and I do really like the finished kind of effect with it so I'm going in with all of those colors and then I'm going to go in with the black again and just go around some of the areas that don't have any kind of stenciling on I don't really want like the whole pattern to show up as one whole pattern I'm just kind of missing a few areas and then adding in a few areas uh, just to make it sort of a little bit more random I suppose but I did just want a little bit more there in the bottom right hand corner before I add any more layers onto the background I do want to emboss that die into it so I've got my Platinum 6 die cutting machine here and I've got a rubber mat which is what you need to be able to do embossing with dies. So the rubber mat prevents the die from actually cutting through the cardstock and it leaves an impression. So I've got my die here on top of the panel and although I'm trying to sort of line it up as best as possible in the middle I'm not holding it down with any tape because I know that I'm going to cut this out so I wasn't too concerned if it shifted and it did shift a little bit but if you want to make sure that it stays in place I would advise to hold it down with a little bit of tape. I'm then placing a panel of printer paper on top that's just in case any of the ink is still a little bit wet so I don't get it on the top adapter plate. I can then run that through the Platinum 6 die cutting machine and like I say that rubber mat is going to prevent it from actually die cutting and it's going to leave a lovely impression in the cardstock. So although I'm calling this embossing with dies, technically it's actually debossing with dies because it's pressing that die into the cardstock. I did get a few areas of cracking in the cardstock so you can see that white cardstock peeking through. So I'm just going to add a little bit more ink on top just to cover those areas and then you'll never know that that's what happened. I want to add a little bit of shimmer onto the panel so I'm taking the black and shimmer tone on tone metallic spray and I'm going to spray, the, spray this mainly in the corners just gives a really lovely shimmery effect onto the panel and you can see here when I spray on the top right hand corner how much shimmer that actually does give it's really very pretty. I did just try and remove any excess with a paper towel but to be honest it didn't really remove any but I'm okay with that in the end because actually I thought it was a really lovely shimmery effect. I do want to add some white splatter and sort of stars into the background as well so I'm taking the white glimmer metallic ink I've added that onto a piece of non-stick craft sheet picking that up with a paintbrush and then I'm tapping the brush over the panel to splatter that ink onto the background so usually I would just go for a, like a white ink but this has got a really lovely shimmer to it it's a metallic ink so I'm just adding even more sparkle and shine onto that background because this background really is the focal point as well as the sentiment that's on top I did just want to kind of go all out with the background and I really love how it turned out so I'm just going to set that aside to dry I can now work on the sentiment so I've got the luggage tag alphabet fancy dies and I do just keep them in the same pocket as the coordinating stamp set but I am just using these alone for my card today and I'm just grabbing the letters to spell out dream big I thought it would work quite nicely with the galaxy background kind of like your dreams can be as big as they want to be so I'm placing that down onto some deluxe smooth white cardstock holding that in place with some low tack tape and I can just do the same thing for the big word as well and then I can run those through the compact cutter So this time I am actually die cutting the letters. So I can just remove that one and do the same thing for the B, I and the G. So flipping over that sandwich and then running that through the compact cutter. I can then remove those letters from the dies and I have cut them another four times from white cardstock and just to save time on the video I've already adhered them one on top of each other so I've got a really nice thick letter here and like I say because 
all that's on the card is just the sentiment and the background I wanted to make sure that these really stood out so they're nice and thick and I do find that it really does make a difference you could definitely add them with foam tape or something like that as well or even cut them from sort of foam sheet but I do just like die cutting the letters from cardstock and then lining them up one on top of each other and using that liquid glue just gives me the time to wiggle them in place and try and line them up as best as possible and I'm just using a pokey tool here just to make sure that I've got no glue kind of seeping out the sides So here I've got my background and like I say I didn't quite get it centred in this panel so I am going to cut it down. I'm then going to adhere it onto an A2 size white card base so that's a finished size of four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches and I wanted to show you that if you wanted to you can just add it in onto the white card base or any color card base you wanted to and it just leaves a really nice small border around the outside edge but I didn't actually want that for my card today so I'm just going to line it up at the top and then cut away the excess so my card did end up being slightly smaller than a standard A2 size but I was okay with that I think it looked in this instance a little bit nicer not having the kind of outside border but I could have used black cardstock and I think that that would have worked a little bit better so I'm just placing my letters on top of the card here so I can see where I want them to be placed before I stick anything down I'm using some precision XL glue and I did get a little bit too much on the back of the letters so I'm just grabbing that scrap piece of paper that I did the ink blending on and I'm just dabbing the back of the letter onto that and that's just going to remove the excess glue. I'm starting off by adhering down the eye in the word big so that I can make sure that that's so kind of as centered as possible although I'm not making sure that these letters are straight I do want them to be in the center of the card so I want to make sure that there's the same kind of area around the outside of the M like with the outside of the card base and then the same with the D so that although they're all kind of wibbly wobbly if that makes sense on the card because I thought it would just work quite nicely with the background I do want to make sure that they're centered and then I can just pop something heavy on the top of that while the glue dries I'm now going to embellish with some translucent enamel dots so I've got the purple ones here to start with and I'm trying to sort of have it so that where I'm placing them the colour of the enamel dots is the same as the background but I really love these translucent ones because although they give some colour it's not kind of like really opaque and it's not sort of too much in your face so they are kind of blending in a little bit with the background which I like but it's still just adding a little bit extra onto the card so I used the pink ones and then the blue ones and then this is the sunset collection that yellow one there at the top I decided to add another purple one at the bottom and then I'm going in with another pink one as well because I felt that it wasn't quite balanced as it was and although it's still an even number and not an odd number which I do tend to prefer with embellishments I'm just counting up here I think it's quite sort of balanced on the card so that is the card finished for today I really love how that background looks debossed onto the background I think it's really pretty and I absolutely love the pattern of those clouds links to the products that I used will be listed over on the hero arts blog thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day